I'm not sure just how long you've been watching my content. And maybe you could tell me with a comment. But there's a map that we had brought into our community games many years ago that I just kind of forgot about. It's called King of Kings. So before we get into this one, I just kind of wanted to show you with these blurry recorded graphics and non-definitive ways that we had back then. One of the most epic moments that this map has ever seen. So you already see all the units flying in here. Uh, the countdown has already started on the Wonder. So it is a King of the Hill game. What's cool about it, though, is we later combined it with Regicide as well. Anyways, check it out. Holding it, and he's so very close to winning this game. One year, one year. Surely he's done it now. No! What? Oh. What? That was as close as it could possibly get. I swear that hit zero. I swear that hit zero. I was just waiting for the victory. Oh my gosh, I don't know what to say about that. Ladies and gents, welcome to what I believe is one of the best maps we've ever had for community games. And it's a little bit of a shame that we haven't used it more. We've been so uh, excited about some of these different features that we have um, and all these different modes that we use. And I forgot about King of Kings, a map that was brought to us back in 2017, maybe even 2016. Shout out to Roach, uh, who played a big role in making this back in the day. So I'm going to explain how this all works. It is regicide. We just spent like 30 minutes trying to set up this game. And then Intervento said this isn't regicide because he couldn't find his king. Um, I'm going to introduce the players, then explain kind of the whole concept of the map. But if you like unique maps and you like unique games... This is precisely what this is, okay? So, in the teal, we've got Mr. Grumpy. Uh, in the red, we've got Cryptics. In the gray, we've got Orion. In the yellow, we've got Space Kinch. In the orange, we've got Intervento. In the purple, we have Supplies. And in the blue, we've got Flint Maestro. And then last but not least, we have Omni Shambles um, in the green, all right? Now, you can win this game by killing all the other kings... And having the only king remaining, so green, for example, boom, king, looks awesome, love it, working it, like to see it. Or you can win by controlling this monument down to zero, okay? Now, let me just double check. Do you get resources from this monument? You do. Okay, so it's worth pointing out that if you're controlling the monument right now, that's a pretty nice boost. Um, you'll notice that the monument is surrounded by amphibious terrain. So units can run on this, but also you can dock this and send ships in. However, you cannot use the ships in the middle to access the water on the outside. And as you can see on the outside, you can dock and add fishing ships, which is very nice. Now also, in the corners of the map, and this is visible for people at all times, are stone and gold. So it's just such a dynamic map, guys, because you've got reasons to go to the water on the outside. But if you make a lot of ships out there, you can't use that on the inside. You have reasons to go to the inside with ships, but you can't go to the outside. And then obviously it's that combination of water versus land all the time. Then you could have everything happening and you could be fighting for the middle control. And you could be fighting for the middle control and then someone can kill your king at home. So we've seen some crazy games here, including uh, the moment that I believe will be edited into this later on. If not, Hardy, remind me, please. Uh, which produced one of the rarest things we've seen in community games. Um, but yeah, guys, we can like, you could tell how old this map script is because there's no shore fish on the shoreline. Um, I, I think it was with the definitive edition or soon after the definitive edition. So 2019 or 2020 that it then became possible to drop off food from shore fish or fish at a dock. But that was not the case in Age of Empires 2 for a very long time. So the original script doesn't have shore fish at all, which is kind of annoying if you get used to that. But it is what it is. Um, I'm excited to see the, the difference of approach here. Uh, I seem to recall in games in the past where, you know, some players would build up a lot of castles in their base before they ever did anything else because they, they didn't feel comfortable pushing otherwise. But should be an interesting one. Uh, other thing to mention about the map is that you do have relics. So you've got relics in the uh, amphibious terrain. I think there's six in total. Well, uh, must be wrong. I'm looking at the mini map right now. There's no relic here. 
So maybe there's just like five. Or is it four? I don't know. You guys can count the relics. <laughs> in terms of skill levels here, uh, I think we've got a pretty good mix. Uh, I, in our Discord, when we set up this game, uh, one player said, I, I haven't played King of the Hill in a long time. Another person said, me either. The other person said, same. And the other person yes. after that said, same. So a lot of people very confused, possibly, at the moment. The kings do not explode here, okay? So I felt like that would be too much. Um, as much as I like the exploding kings, I feel like there's enough activity and there's enough things happening here where you're going to need to be fighting all the time. And there's just so many different aspects to pay attention to, including Diplo. Uh, players are all allied with each other right now, but they could change it if they wish to, which again adds further elements. So my question for people who are watching later on on YouTube, how long have you been watching? Did you see the original King of Kings map before? on the old graphics with my old crappy internet recording, my old mic. I sound like a freaking teenager, uh, even though I wasn't. <laughs> I was like 23. Uh, still sound like a child in those old vids. Just curious how long you guys have been around. Good to have you around too. All right. So I, I don't think we have any real like community game killers here I, I don't think there's a player that stands out to me as a strong favorite um supplies did just cancel feudal and just realized it so with that admission i'm gonna say supplies maybe isn't the favorite no offense supplies <laughs> um you know flint maestro and and space kinch and Intervento, I think those three have probably played in more than, than other players. It seems like they're almost always here on a Friday, almost always entering. I'd say maybe they, they've each played around three to five games. Uh, I think that uh, that means a lot. Uh, if I recognize your name, you've probably watched more games. And even if you haven't played in more games, have a better idea of maybe what to try. But we'll see. Uh, I believe, T90, that community games are rigged because I've been trying to play community games since 2018 and have never been picked. Well, I'm sorry you think that. Uh, it's not rigged, okay? It's just a randomizer. And unfortunately, random means that some other people can get picked. Or frequently, uh, we could eventually implement some type of weird elimination system, but there's negatives to the elimination system. So all I can say is your day will come. It might be tomorrow. Well, it won't be tomorrow. I won't be doing community games tomorrow. It might be the next time I do community games, or it might be 16 years after. I don't know. But it feels like every single day we do community games, people are saying, oh my god, first time! First time for me! First time! And then they get really nervous. And then, you know, they have a good time, I hope. Hmm. Castle Age time is always a big thing to determine who's favorite. Space Kinch is going to be first. Playing as the Gurjaras as well, and we instantly see the second TC. And yeah, there's a lot to do on this map. There's a lot to think about. You have the docking aspect. You have the town centers. You have the potential to take a corner. Again, it's always visible, right? So you could maybe even build a TC here. Oh, no, I forgot. You actually made it so you can't build castles or TCs here with these little rock terrains. This map is very well thought out, so you can really only have mining camps and towers here. Mm, we'll see. I think elimination should reset every one to two months. I really don't want to get into it um, because I've, I've already thought about it and talked about it with, with people. But keeping the system as is, is is what I'd like to do. I think the only thing I'd like to implement in the future is uh, returning to a model where like subs get extra entries. I felt like that's pretty reasonable if you're supporting like me financially, even if it's just a small amount, I feel like, you know, a, a couple extra entries is always nice. Um, but, you know, even with that, like people have said, like, hey, listen, I, I subbed for a year or two, two years, three years, four years, and uh, it, it didn't, I still wasn't able to get in, right? So it is what it is. When you've got hundreds of people trying to enter and you only get like maybe 30 people every Friday, it's it's tricky and it's just part of part of the system um and again we'll leave it at that now funny little side story so i believe 
Mr. Grumpy's wife or fiance or whatever is currently watching the stream. And so earlier on in the day, like three hours ago, right? Um, she said, uh, I'm going to make a bet or not a bet or a wager. I don't even know if she said that. But anyway, she said, if me or my, my person, my partner get selected for a community game today, which we never have. We're going to name our newborn T90. Now that was said, I kind of forgot the name. I was unfamiliar with the username of her partner. And then at when the names were selected here, um, I said out loud, I, like I, what she had said. And she said, I guess we're going to have to name our kid T90. Apparently, Mr. Grumpy, yes. you can call me his wife. Although we don't care. Perfect. Apparently, Mr. Grumpy didn't know about the deal because he said in the game chat, she said, what? <laughs> so Mr. Grumpy is going to be grumpy about that one. Listen, if you're going to name anyone after me, okay, um, you're going to have to pay a small fee. No, I'm kidding. If you're going to name anyone after me, I just asked that the first name's T90 and middle name's official. Because I just, I really want that kid to get made fun of at recess. Um, so, you know, do with that what you will. <laughs> Okay, what, what is going on here in the chat? Um, Gray said, would want to tell you that it would be good to maintain a good relationship. We can share the resources in the bottom without fighting for them. Oh, okay, so Gray and Red are basically like, hey, let's be buddies. Let's be allies so we can share these resources. And that makes sense. And the only reason I'm able to make the jokes about kids getting made fun of at recess is because I was the kid who got made fun of at recess, okay? I was that kid. I, uh, my last name is Barry. I didn't stand a chance. I got called Dingleberry since the age of 10. So it's, uh, I make those jokes with love, with love and understanding. Anyways, uh, 62 eco for Omni Shambles. Space Kinch is at 57. You've got 54 for Flint. So those are our top three currently. Let's look at the full breakdown. It's not too, too bad. We don't have anyone in the 30s. Uh, unless, okay, Crypt is about to leave the 30s. But is adding the second town center now. We have 337 years left on the countdown. Yellow has been in the middle, has been collecting those resources for a while now. So yellow, I mean, four, four town centers? Yeah, four town centers looking pretty good. Not bad. Yeah, also, so I, listen to this. So my first name's Tristan, last name's Barry. It's public information, all right? It's on my Liquipedia profile. It's out there. So um, so Tristan's not that bad of a name, right? Uh, I really like Tristan. It's a very unique name. And I remember, I always got made fun of for the Barry thing, which is like, whatever, you know, you're a kid, there's jokes. And I remember we're like, maybe, I don't know how old we were, maybe like 10, 11 years old. We were in elementary school. And uh, we were we were searching for the meaning of our names because I don't know why that was educational, but the teacher just thought that'd be cool. Like, oh, let's talk about what the meanings of your names are. Look up the meaning of Tristan. It originates from the word triste, which is sadness. It's like the origin of my name is sadness and depression. I went home. I was like, mom, what's up with this? And she was like, I just really thought the name sounded cool, to be honest. I didn't really look up what it meant. Sorry, son. That doesn't mean anything. So thanks. Yep. Then I went to a school which already had another Tristan and already had someone with my last name. So they had to call me by my initials, which is TB. So then everyone called me tuberculosis. Yo, tuberculosis, what you doing later? I'd be like, stop it, Jim. Rough life. Just a rough life. We've got some chatter still. Looks like everyone's just booming, though. Space Kinch is saying how stressful it is. We have 290 years remaining. And, um... Flint Maestro teaming with Green, apparently. Says I'm going to make some G-bows, which is Genoese crossbow, but sounds cooler. And I'm seeing some Navy... Or, I'm hearing Navy, actually. Where, where did I hear that? I guess fishing ships. Uh, but I imagine we are going to see some Navy from the Gurjara player in the middle. Supplies says publicly, hi, blue friend. 
will be a little awkward if, uh, you know, other people were to see that and maybe want that friendship, but nothing too bad. We actually have blue and purple sharing the resources in the north, which might have prompted that. They're the only players who are taking corner golds and stones. <laughs> Telling things like this to the internet never ends well. Listen, I, I know. <laughs> I know, right? I've told stories about how people thought my name was Chicken and all types of embarrassing stories. I save the really bad ones for just me and my friends. Don't worry. But, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it uh, to a certain extent. I've gotten through a lot in life just learning to laugh at yourself and not taking things too seriously. So, And as I said, you know, uh, name's already kind of out there. So not like that information's a secret. This map is freaking awesome. I don't want to get you overhyped right now, but trust me, it's going to be great. Normally, you're going to see people focus on the middle monument, but you have one or two people who are just like little demons just running around trying to kill kings. And we've seen some epic things too, because you could make transports with trebuchets and army, and you could just transport around the backside. And if you make castles here to protect your economy, you then it'll have castles towards the middle to take the middle. It's just like so cool. And yeah, for the time being, it looks like there are a couple alliances, but that will all change, obviously, when people want to go for glory. Gotta love it. Like these guys are probably doing some things and they're just like, oh man, I can't wait to go. Oh, I gotta remember 26 minutes. I did that really cool move with the quick wall, my villager. I can't wait to see what T90 says about that. And then I've talked about everything I've talked about over the last 10 minutes. Uh, there are a lot of wolves attacking. Woo, woo, woo. Come on, Flint. You can do it. Boo. Woo, woo, boo. Come on. He's doing all right. He's working on his Jeebos. <laughs> Making his Jeebos. I don't know why that feels a little wrong to say. Because it totally makes sense. And we have the trade across the amphibious terrain here. That is not something I have seen much of. Very vulnerable trade, but you should probably get the trade in while you can. Um, not G-Boats, Metzemeister. Met it's uh, G-Bows. Hmm. Grace is space. Your top score and have the middle, so you'll likely become a target. That's true. <laughs> Yellow says, I'm waiting for that to happen. Well, how many docks do we have here? We've got nine docks. You know what's guaranteed to happen here, by the way? A ship is guaranteed to get stuck here. Because he's going to set the gather point here. And the ship's going to pop out and then be stuck. Guarantee it. Yellow and gray talking about a bit of an agreement to not attack each other. But somebody's going to have to win. Somebody's going to have to make a move. Now, I know Supplies here is a big fan of the Goths. Uh, I forced them to go random civilization. So sorry about that one, Supplies. But Bohemians... Uh, they're not actually very similar to the Goths. They do have strong halbs. Very beautiful farms here for Supplies. Holy. There's not really a single one misplaced. Looks like we're seeing docks there. Some archer ranges, even a stable. Just thinking about options as Imp is flying in for these guys. Hmm. Omni Shambles is in an interesting position. The way he just had his knights just sitting outside of his stables like that. It gives off a noob vibe to not set a rally point for it. But then again, it's like full upgrades on knights. 140 eco, and now he's ready. Mr. Grumpy is going to continue to be very grumpy if those knights come over here. There's no way that's to get stopped. So you just have to hope that you can be really nice and that green doesn't want to choose to kill you. 195 years. And green says, how ready are you? Man, these guys mean business. What a combination, too. I think Italians might be one of the better civilizations for this map, by the way. Ooh, look at the trade from Flint. Oh, really needs to ask his teammate to dock over here. That's really smart. This is what can make trade cogs actually good. 
the fact that you have corner uh, a corner piece of land. Because normally you would dock here, and you would dock here, and then they bump a lot more. But this gives you more of a path. Green's calling Genoese crossbows. Gbos, I like it. It's a new trend, guys. It started here first. It started with Flint. Unless I, it has been a trend and I missed out on it. Heavy demolition ship is one of the best technologies you can have for this map. And it's a technology that I'm not really fully aware of with a lot of sieves. Um, like, I don't think Italians get it. But the other sieves, I have no clue. I think Saracens get it. I think Port... I know Portuguese do. But don't ask me if Bohemians get it. I've got no clue. Malay would be strong here. Yeah, we have seen Malay in the past. Placing docks all over the shoreline. And Interventus says, Hey, Yellow, how are you doing? Now, obviously, these two could really butt heads here at some point. But there's the galleons for Yellow. I'm friend, no attack. Sorry. Guys, Space will happily take this win just being friends with everybody. Space will happily steal it. Space doesn't care. We have Navy on the outside, too. I wonder if this is Space intentionally doing this. I imagine it is. All the docks are producing evenly, which makes me think it's a select all dock hotkey or control group. But the fact that Garrison tells me it's intentional. Green will be an imp. We'll be able to upgrade those units soon. Mr. Grumpy here is the one that has to name their newborn after me. All right. T90, middle name official. Remember, please don't actually do that, by the way. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Because I'll be irrelevant by the time your kid's old enough to understand that he was named after somebody on YouTube. And it'll just be embarrassing. So. I'm going to do the same if you need trade. So lots of chatty Diplo work here. And there's Gray now to take this gold and... They're talking about trade cogs. I mean, listen, th what they're talking about is good for present-day Diplo. However, I, I think it's just a map that demands a little bit more aggression than Diplo. And it's funny because these days, it's like there's so much Diplo and so many tiny little things you got to do with Diplo. But I think this is just one of those where you got to YOLO. Just go crazy. 175 eco for orange, by the way. Holy, and a couple yellow villagers are dying over here. Oh, he means don't get heavy demo? Okay, thank you for that. Blue said, on my way. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, Grumpy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, okay. This is not going to make him less grumpy, that's for sure. That is going to be a dead king. And the kings do not explode. So you can't like, like send your king over to green and say, screw you. Pretty sure there's no explosion, right? There's no explosion. So Mr. Grumpy dies. Mr. Grumpy didn't have a chance to get into the game. And Omni Shambles and Flint Maestro just absolute bullies over here. And everyone else is like, what What just happened? Flint says, I didn't do it. And Green said, sorry, but only said it to one person who could hear it. And Supplies is going to make a move. Good job, Supplies. Supplies says, you know what I need? I need some taste in the middle right now. I'm going to shoot your camel with these awkwardly shaped cannonballs that shoot out of my crooked cannons. Boom. 100 years. Now, anytime the monument is is lost now. It goes back up to 100, okay? The supplies is going for it. I think Yellow was actually be very happy to give that up for the time being because now the focus is not going to be on him. Um, Hold on a second. Interventus says pop limit 200, darn it. Okay, for a second I was worried that it wasn't 200 because I see his eco counts just continue to rise at 184. How many fishing ships do you have, bro? 31. I don't know how efficient that is at this point, to be honest with you. But there are some trade cogs in there as well. 
All right, so 85 years left. Yellow swinging the navy over. Sorry for the zoom outs. I like to do it from time to time. It gives me a better idea of how things are flowing. Blue is actually just stealing the relics from Grumpy's base. No, no worry. Why is yellow coming here? Possible yellow selected these ships with these ships and just now realized it. Wow. These wagons are actually insane against Navy because their pure armor is so high. But uh, it's like they, they both take a very long time to kill each other, I guess. But dang. I think Yellow is also having the same thought. Like, I was not expecting for these Hussite wagons to tank that much. But, like, look how little damage the galleons take as well. <laughs> so, it'll, it'll be a long fight, but... That's what you want. You want tankiness more than anything. You don't necessarily need your units to get that many kills. So I think the Hussite wagons are actually good enough. 50 years is the point where you better be making moves. So I don't see any kings that are on the outside. So I'm a little confused. Maybe yellow wants to take people's trade. The red just turns on purple now. And is going to send uh, imperial camels to the middle. Yeah, imp camels will deal with this. Classic Intervento, he's saying, Yellow, you have idle villagers when you have when he has 182 eco. And your fishing ships are traveling 16,000 miles to drop off food. Below 50 years, guys. Below 50 years. Demo! Oh. Yeah, the Imp Camels should be able to clear this up pretty quickly. Very strong unit. This is before we see any Navy come in from anyone else. This is what the focus on the map's about. By the way, green, happily castling and taking some of the resources from Mr. Grumpy. Yeah, I do feel bad for Mr. Grumpy, but someone's got to be that first person to go out. And it looked like there just wasn't a lot of fortifications there to really discourage the others. I'm sure Supplies is hoping, was hoping to random goths and would have loved goths here because I know Supplies loves the infantry spam, but... The spam of wagons and hand cannons is just not going to be fast enough. Uh, countdown will reset, assuming this fire ship gets taken out. Micro! But yeah, goes down. Uh, and... <laughs> Can you imagine if he somehow clutched it with a couple wagons? <laughs> Dude, these things are insane! <laughs> There's like a hundred army here. Okay, now it resets. And red gets it. Red might not want this. Red might want to leave. Um, now that it's reset. Yellow has been on the outside attacking purple. And supplies just as worth it as red stays in the middle with 95 years remaining. Let's look at stockpiles quickly. Gray has the middle now. There's the stockpiles. Flint has 13,000 gold with a sieve that has amazing navy and the Jeebos. Oh, man. Green's king is threatened. Green brought the king over here. Also, weird little bug where you can hear the onagers in the corner still there. But, like, what? That's a risky play, man. I would make some towers, but it. I guess he's trying to get through right now. Mr. Grumpy's villagers are in the way, so that's kind of cool. Flint says, I thought Relic Victory would work. And, oh, wow. I didn't think about that. Well, that's pretty nifty, actually. How did he get all those relics? I guess he got two from um, from Mr. Grumpy. Oh, Supplies resigns or disconnects? I think Supplies just disconnected. But it said resigned. So I'm not entirely sure, but maybe at this point, you know, he didn't have a whole lot to fight for. Maybe the resources weren't there. Would have liked to have seen Halberdier. But yeah, there's five relics in that monastery. So must have something to do with the fact this is King of the Hill. Oh, you disconnected? All right. Well, sad times. What do we have on the field? We've got crazy elephants from Khmer. We've got the Hindustani Imperial Camels. We've got the famous Gurjara Navy. <laughs> we've got the Jeebos. We've got a lot of strong units right now. 
Unfortunately, we won't see the caravels in the middle. That was a really good plan. Portuguese would have been sick. Can't help but feel like yellow's 20 or some army out here isn't really going to be helpful. And yellow just says, this is boring. Well, you can make it less boring if you turn on the person who has control of the middle right now. Is red not planning on defending here? Like, And more specifically, is red not planning on attacking gray and defending the wonder? Or is he just aiming for a team victory here? Blue's massing ships to the top left of your screens. Yellow's clearly thinking about this. Just said it was boring. And the diplomatic side of this, it gets a little tricky because people don't want to throw away long-term alliances. But at the same time, what are you going to do, right? You've got to go for it. You have to expect this to happen. I think players will get a little bit more used to this. But we've got 47 years... And if Grey were to have more reinforcements in queue, if Grey were to, like, send the elephants in, dude. If he were to actually go for it, I think he'd actually have a shot. Blue says, you want to leave, Grey? That's actually a good plan. If Grey leaves, then people won't attack him. And it'll just reset, and now green has it. There you go. <laughs> no, is, is nobody going to want the monument right now? <laughs> I think everyone's going to be like, no, you have it. <laughs> Yellow says everyone gets a turn. <laughs> That's funny. Military count's pretty insane for Gray. <laughs> These guys are having fun, but nobody... They're all allied, and nobody wants to be the one person to go for it. So, I, uh, I, I don't exactly blame them. But there is something you can do here, guys, and it's Snipe Kings. Yellow's got nothing on land. Gray's kind of set up more to make archers and whatever else, and skirms and elephants. I even think orange would be an easy snipe, but... <gasps> Intervento! You seeing what I'm seeing? I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And it's a great sight. I like it. Because all that's going to happen is they're going to continue to play this back and forth game. Because green will know, if I stay in here for much longer, they don't only turn on me, they destroy me elsewhere. I lose my whole wood line. We probably see blue move in with trebs. Hmm. Lots of different ways that you can play the map. Lots of different things that you can do. Experience, obviously, very helpful in this map. Yellow just sitting in the middle and says, maybe we should all enemy and have a big free-for-all. It's an idea. I was originally... Well, sorry about that. I was originally going to do a standard free-for-all, but I felt like the start would be too brutal. You'd have, like, people wouldn't be... Able, like, some people would get the gold and the stones in the corners. Other people wouldn't. So, I, I don't know. Gray says, that would give blue and green the advantage. Why is that? Because they killed... Because there's people close to them? They don't have a side to worry about. Okay. That's a very fair assessment of the situation. And also, their sibs are really strong. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> That's why you always set the rally point into another castle, though. Well played, yellow. And uh, maybe Orange could have thought about that and sat on the left side. A yellow notice now turns on Orange. And Interventus is well done with your pathing. And so it was a good attempt from Orange. And now we see some fighting in the middle. So now these two kind of shake things up a little bit. And clearly these two aren't going to be very friendly. Uh, what's going to happen here? What's firing? What? Guys, are we witnessing a bug right now? I see arrows firing from something. What is happening? Is the Gurjara dock firing arrows? Are all the docks firing arrows? <laughs> I don't know exactly what we're witnessing, but that's either a map thing or a game thing, and that's not a bonus that I'm aware of. 
If the melee are involved, the melee dog shoots arrows, but even then it shoots more arrows than that. So that's a bit weird. Yellow's Navy will actually clear out the majority of the trade. Still very confused by this. But that's that must be a bug. Alright, so red took control of the monument from gray. Um, you know, they, they just didn't want anyone to be, you know, uh, courageous enough to attack them. Sad times for orange in some ways, but in other ways, as I said before, like, yellow didn't really have the navy set up. And, like, these bomber cannons and mamelukes could probably advance across the map and just go right in and kill these castles. You do need to avoid the navy, and the demos are included in that. We have the town bell from Intervento. Probably made sense in this scenario because there's so much going on. He's still trying to load up stuff into transports. Oh my god! And the heavy demos land. And that, that was just not a good sight there for Intervento. Tried his best to snipe somebody. Tried his best to be fancy. It would have been brilliant, but now he's kind of paying the price. And I think, you know, if he were to have a little bit more now, he could advance across. But I'm seeing the Navy come in from yellow here. Navy might be superior. And we still can't forget about the middle, right? Intervento is falling apart. But we cannot forget about the middle and the transport. Not the transport. No, they can't swim. Yikes. Again, kings do not explode here, guys. So if the king were to die, there's really no repercussions for yellow. Even if the king were to die in his own base, more demos landing. It seems like it's just getting worse and worse here for Intervento. And yeah, it's definitely getting worse. 50 years, though. These guys have to look at the middle, and Gray's got some demos. I guess he doesn't get heavy demo. But still worth it to have some demos out there. And Green says go for it? I think Green might go for it in Red's base, too. And he's saying it to Blue. He's telling Blue to make the move. Makes sense. It's still a little weird. Like, the situation here with Gray and Red. I also think... Like, Red doesn't have a unit in there right now. And it's still having him control it. And I think this is a result of the fact that he's allied with Gray, who's there. Which is a bit weird. Like, watch. I think Red's gonna leave. Oh, no. It reset. Okay, I was wrong. Uh, well, I'm happy to see that it reset. The gray and yellow working together. Not pleased with Intervento's actions. And Intervento not pleased with his own actions, I guess. Obviously would have gone down as a legend if he got that snipe and carried on with more snipes, but... It's actually, blue has the middle right now, and I'm really excited to see gray turn on him with those demos. Interventus says, hey, Red, can you help versus gray and yellow? And then he dies. <gasps> he dies. Well, Red, I don't think had any any interest in helping. Uh, unfortunately for Red, Red's got some bigger problems. And GG, well played to Intervento. Intervento, I appreciate you. You tried it. Might not have worked out, but you still gave it an attempt. A lot of other people wouldn't have tried it there. But yeah, trying to attack the hindustani player when you're the persians could sometimes be seen as as a mistake because you've got paladins and they've got the imperial camel and the imperial camel is going to wreck there and flint says and these two are continuing to talk to each other maybe don't make paladins into camels and green says don't worry i have a plan what is the plan hmm <gasps> Oh, boy. Ooh, this gets really interesting, actually. I believe Green's plan is continuing on water. But Red knows that King is here because the corners are always visible. Also, crazy game lag. My apologies. I don't know if Red's going to be able to get this in time. Green! Oh, the King's right there! The King's right there! It's right there! Red, it's not there anymore! The queen is in the other castle. Oh my goodness. Great defense there from green. Great idea. I think red just spotted it. But the king should survive there. In the middle, it's at 50 years for blue. And we might have missed a demo or two. I apologize. Game's lagging like crazy. But I don't think blue's going to last in here much longer. 
So good work all around here. Uh, gray's now against blue as well, which I thought was the case in the first place. Yellow's against blue and green. And counts on resets, and gray has it with a couple skirmishers. Five people left. Green, you really have to take care of these cannon galleons. Um, and man, the Diplo, the Diplo side of this is making it really awkward. Who's going to have the guts to just go for it? Oh, those demos are going to be a great addition. Man, who knew the Gurjara Navy was so good? Look at that. Boom. We'll need some more demos on the front. Or maybe have Gray you know, help out here. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Ay, 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 ay. Get away, Blue. You have nothing that can deal with this. Oh, it's all going to die. Now, it is expensive for yellow to do this too. That's the thing you have to think of with demos. Um, would have liked to have seen him go in for the Genoese Cross moment as well, but... Gray's got Khmer Elephants and Scorpions and also could make more Navy, so... Yeah, you really want to have... I think the correct composition is Galleons and Demos as opposed to ever mixing in Fire Ships. Boom! Yeah, obviously awkward with the Italians. You don't get heavy demo, so you got to think about if you even want to do that in the first place. <gasps> what? Does he have any clue? He, yeah, he does. <laughs> I like how Green's plan was to try and snipe a king with the slowest possible unit he could make. <laughs> I mean, I respect it. Just like what Intervento tried, I respect it. I assume he transported. It's possible he just kind of slalomed through here. Uh, these are elite war elephants. They are a really tough unit to kill, but they're not going to snipe a king. Not anytime soon. Red hops onto water, though. He's going to go to the corner. And as we see a big demo shot land there, it is now yellow's time to say to Gray, Gray, leave the middle, or I demo you next. Definitely see it feels like there's a bit of lag here with so many different things happening, right? But it's at 50 years, you've got to say that. If you're not, players can take the win from you. And it's very easy to forget about it. The red said, I thought... Green, I thought we had something special. The king is right here for green. And green's got to really defend. Green's lost the majority of the eco there. Green says it wasn't meant to be. Elephants did get cleared up, by the way, after taking out the castle. Got some random Hussar raids here from Gray on blue. So it feels like green and blue are kind of falling off a little bit. Gray could win the game. Space, this is your moment. You've got to be making a move against Gray. It is not easy to pick up on this in real time, especially when blue is putting up such a solid fight. Red might need to say something too. I mean, I'm pretty sure Gray just wins. There's no allied victory. I believe Gray will be the winner. 30 years. And it's coming back to me now, too. It's really complicated on this map to pay attention to that timer. A 100-year reset isn't as insane as we talked about earlier in the day. Like, some maps where we have more time and you want... It makes sense, but... It's almost not enough time when the aggression's this insane. Now, someone could kill Gray's king as well, which could make things very interesting, but it's at 24 years... And Yellow says, Gray, out to reset, please. It's because he realized. No, 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 no. You use the demos on Gray here, Yellow. You use the demos on Gray. Bring a unit close. Oh, uh, that's that's a stall tactic if I've ever seen it. Is Gray actually going to try and let it reset? Does he think the demos would destroy him? He is actually going to let it reset. Okay. I, I honestly, as scary as it got right there, I actually think Gray would have got wiped by those demos. He doesn't have a strong answer to them. It would have been close, but... Interesting decision from him to do that. He didn't have to. He could have just tried. He chose not to. Also, blue here with some fire ships we have to pay attention to. Sorry, so many different things to look at right now. Blue losing castles. Still making more fire ships nonstop. Gray's got a random demo there. That he just pulled back or something happened there. I'm not entirely sure. 
Red is distracted with these camels. He was chasing down green for the longest time. Green is now coming home. And blue says lame 3v2. This is true. But the king is inside of this transport ship. And oh, oh my goodness. It's like red found it at the exact moment he needed to. But I don't know if he could survive. The king might not be able to path because of the, the trade cogs. Ah! No way. The trade cogs actually blocked it. Gray could do it too. This is insane. We also have the middle to worry about with 85 years. We've got an elephant battle. And blue signaling it like, come on, somebody kill this thing. And red got away with one there. Also, with the way the units run through each other on the current patch, that's probably why it happened. There were like three instances where the king just ran through another unit. Normally, there's the pathing's not quite like that. So red's king has survived a lot in this game. I Don't ask me how. And this fight continues with 70 years. We might see computers melt. Like, we might have a couple people drop and they'd say, T90, sorry, but uh, my PC's broken. I won't be able to play in community games still get a new one. This is insane. Look at all the blinking on the map right now. The only person who's relatively untouched would be Yellow. And I do think that Yellow's army composition is superior as well. The only thing is he doesn't have a unit to, to sit in the middle. He can get kills, but he can't control the monument easily. Because galleons have to run, so they have to fall back, and then demos just explode and die. So I actually think a player who can make elephants, or hussars, or anything like that would be strong. Holy crap. Great. Made a bunch of fire ships over here to keep things protected. Um, ends up protecting it. Red learned a lesson there. Red did have castles here. Really shouldn't have been on water in the first place. Blue takes the monument. So it is It is green and blue versus yellow and gray. You do have red out there, but red isn't doing much. Uh, red, if anything, is actually just focusing on the land on the sides. Is there a, is, is there a way I can remove the dinging? <laughs> Select the monument. <laughs> I'm sorry for all the dings, guys. <laughs> They're on water maps in Age of Empires, the ships ding, the docks ding, the techs ding, everything's got a different ding, and it's just a lot of ding. Green says, to be honest, if I help you win this, I will take it as a win. First community game. Let me know how I can help. Well, there you go, all the people who said they're, you know, trying to get into games. You might be Omni Shambles left. Uh, next, sorry, I can't speak. I mean, Green's played very well. Um, I think it's going to be hard for him to win on his own, so having that team outlook isn't necessarily bad. So many demos from Yellow. I want to look at the stockpile of resources. There's only four players of the five left that have resources still coming in, but Blue has 17k gold. And a lot of that's the relics, but we'll see if the relics last. Holy cow. Again, you need units to stand in that middle area to hold the monument. I guess fire ships could be that, but then with the with the demos out there, it's tricky. The Flint's is Age of Demos. But the demos haven't won it yet. Still do feel like if anyone wanted to, they could maybe make an attempt at yellow. But he's got a couple of his castles garrisoned, similar to how blue is a couple of the towers garrisoned. Lots of fakes out there. Yellow now takes control of the middle. <laughs> Blue says out of wood. Ooh. Well, you could still take wood. It sucks to have 15k gold and then be out of wood, though. There's, there's plenty of wood here. And Blue needs the wood for Genoese crossbowmen and also the, uh, the fire ships. Also, Choo Choo Train, I don't know if you're out there lurking, but I did see you uh, showed up. What's up? What's up? Oh, wow. Nice job, Omni Shambles. Send some wood over to blue. Good teammate. So I do see this. Red has... Is that two? Yeah, two elite cannon galleons slowly taking out castles. Um, Green's King is no longer here. The trade cogs are coming out from yellow, going over towards red. 
And red has been trade cogging as well. As has gray. So that's pretty smart, actually. Oh, God. Age of Demos is back. Ay, 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 ay. I think it would make a lot of sense for blue to be going galleon, right? You already have the ranged upgrades that apply to the ships and, like, the archers. You would need to get galleon. But it would help out with sniping some of these demos, I think. It might honestly be better to have full navy, but Genoese crossbowmen are going to feel a lot stronger once there's that elephants in the middle. Okay, so remember uh, maybe like 20 minutes ago, Gray had it at 20 years and Yellow said, leave the middle. And Gray did that and we questioned it. Yellow has it at 60 and Gray's sitting right next to him. We'll see what happens. Blue's back on wood, by the way. Blue also mopped up that cannon galleon that was going for his relics. Red's still kind of inching around. All things worth pointing out. Green. <laughs> with a very ambitious attempt. Is here with some cav archers and halves and trebs. That, yeah, that's just not going to happen. That was way more ambitious than any attempt we've seen so far in this game. No more demos for Yellow. Is he having gold problems? He's having gold problems. It's at 50 years. Blue's pointing it out. Gray will defend Yellow here, though. I like how Flint's being active and talking about this. He's like, listen, don't let Yellow in. What is this? Oh, it looks like Red's actually attacking the castle where Green has the king. And ooh, Red's got a pretty big force here. Blue is here to help. That's a lot of hand cannons, though. I think the hand cannons might actually beat the Genoese crossbowmen these days. There was a time where archers always lost the hand cannons. But these are Hindustani hand cannons with nine range. Genoese crossbowmen don't necessarily specialize in... Uh, in countering hand cannons, but yeah, okay. Look at this. Blue says, letting yellow win. Amazing. So he's a little bit of salt. But he's also like, come on, guys. Like, seriously? And then what does that do? That makes red turn on yellow immediately. And great job from them to realize yellow is just going to try and take the victory. It resets, baby. This is king of kings. 97 years remaining. That's what I'm talking about. And now I think everything's fair. I think from here on out, if you, they want to set aside their alliances, go ahead. they can go ahead and do so. But I think this has been a pretty well-rounded game. The fact that they didn't just let yellow sort of victory there makes me very happy. I'm trying to see if maybe like gray didn't turn on yellow, so the trade is still there. But red did, so if the trade were to go this way, the castle would hit it. Dang. It does seem like green doesn't have much economy left. Um 52 economy is just not really that good. We're not seeing a lot from green. There was a desperation snipe for a reason. 130 military for blue, 97 for red, 47 for orange. And that means yellow is below that. And yellow is just really hoping to trade up. Wait for the resources to come in. It's a strat. But you have to hope that the others don't win in the meantime. I like this map a lot. I think... The, the fact that we brought this back for the first time in probably well over a year means that players come in with certain, like, inexperiences as well and what you can do. Like, what Intervento tried is actually what a lot of people did more in the past. The thing is, had he just gone Siege Ram with Army, he didn't even have to be sneaky. Sometimes being sneaky is a trap. But at the, that time, Yellow didn't have any buildings. So he could have actually just gone, like, Hussar Siege Ram, you know? Sea Germ is actually one thing that players learned is, is really, really good to have on this type of map. Because it's good against ships, and it's great against buildings, and there's a whole lot of both. Alright, so the way this has been going is player gets the middle, it's about 50 years, they don't want to completely die to all the others, so they turn. Or, sorry, they don't turn, they leave the monument. Blue is moving out. Blue I have a lot of respect for, he's basically fighting on his own now. 
And so he's here and he's here fighting gray, yellow, and also red because he has to contest that middle area, he feels. Here, by the way, still seemingly okay. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Here, red's trying to take out the castle. Blue also defending there, as will green. Castle will stay up. Blue backs up. It's at 45 years now. Will gray or yellow say to red, leave the middle? Flint Maestro says, fine. You guys play hot potato. He understands what's happening here. Man, imp camels are pretty good. I guess they're also pretty expensive for red. So he's got to be careful. Yellow has now turned on red. Um, and might even ally him again. I'm not sure, but Gray has the middle and Hot Potato continues. 130 years. Or sorry, 95 years. One hour and 30 minutes is what I meant to say. I don't think red realizes that yellow's against him. And oh! He realizes. He's attacking the Hussars now. And Gray says, I kind of want to let T90 go over the next game of Sudden Death. What does that mean? That means he wants to finish the game so we can move on to the next game of Sudden Death? Or he wants this game to be so long that I can't do the next game of Sudden Death? I want to see this game play out and be a really good game. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about the next game. Play your best Age of Empires 2. Try and win. Gray saying, let the countdown finish. Okay, so great. Oh, this is... Oh, yeah, that's a classic. Yeah, guys. Uh, This is just coming from someone who's never uh, won a community game before, but that's not important. I think for T90's sake, we should just let me have the middle. Can we all agree? Can't we agree that T90's time is important here? I mean, come on. Classic. Yeah, it's all about me, huh? Nothing about the fact that you don't want to get hit by all these demos. Okay. It's all right. I like the strategy. Not a bad strat. I know that at least 25% of you believe the words that you said, but I also know there's a part deep down that really wants to win. And there's another part of you that knows you're not going to get it. <laughs> With 40 demos patrolling there, you're not getting it now. There's just no way. Hmm. Wood is actually a really big deal right now, guys. I'm starting to think about that more and more. Like, Red's chopping through these trees pretty quickly. All these corners. Uh, Hussar spam has, has been helpful for Yellow. That way he has something to hold the middle with. Blue said something about feeding his dog, so I think he's going to be back in a bit. I think he's actually feeding his dog, but... He did make some pikes, so who knows? Uh, do rams do bonus damage for ships? I don't think they do. Oh, God. Well, he might not have a lot of eco if you're green, so he's just making crossbows that only cost wood. Hype. <laughs> um, he has a lot of them. I don't know. Every time I see trash bows, it feels like they're underwhelming. But I've been seeing them more and more, and there have been some times where I'm like, well, what else are you going to make with them? You know, what else are you going to make as Persians? And they do a decent enough job. The Halbs are awesome, though. The Halbs poke down those ships pretty quickly. Oh, Ghoulams are cheating, man. That's an anti-archer unit. Come on, Red. What are you doing to poor Green over here? 30 years for Grey. 30 years is yellow paying attention. Yellow says, is it time for a free-for-all? Blue says, I wish. Yeah, why not, says Gray. Gray, what are you doing? Say, oh, uh, no, uh, I think we really should, uh, I think we should weigh up our options. Let's go through the room one by one and see what everyone thinks in detail. Red, what do you think? And then that takes five to ten years for Red to give an opinion. All right, that's fair. Green, what do you think? They should just go around in that circle constantly. Gray, with 20 years left on the clock, says, let's give free-for-all start now to give a chance to blue and green. Fair play to you, Gray. Fair play to you, but your poor elephants disagree with that decision. This is not going to last long. There is a chance. You always need one unit in the middle. That's it. And he does have some fires. Oh, he's got more elephants. Oh, my God. 
yeah guys i just wanted to be fair you know uh just a free-for-all you know i feel like it's just the fair it's just the best thing for everybody just to give everyone else a chance he's gonna do it the demos are not enough that was satisfying to watch the crossbows go down but gray's gonna win yeah here we go i think anyways elephants are too chonky there's not enough units out here from everyone to be able to kill gray I don't know if that was strategy from Gray, but it freaking worked. And, you know, 50 years is that cutoff that we talk about for a reason, right? You need to move in a little bit faster than 50. GG. Really tough map to play. Really eventful one. And the game ends. Um, I had fun watching this one. I, I'm excited to maybe do more of this. Uh, and I, I also... I think there's a lot of different things we can try. We could maybe bring back some pick sieves so people could try some more unique strats. Uh, we could also bring back just straight free-for-all as well. It was a bit of hot potato there. Neither player wanting to be greedy because like one player offered to leave the middle. So then they felt like they needed to leave the middle. But also there was a lot of mutually dis assured destruction if they were to decide to just, you know, turn against each other. Uh, ultimately, the decision to go for the turn against each other in the street free for all happened about 30 minutes 30 years away from the end which was just enough for gray to snipe uh sneak in there sorry uh 908 kills for yellow the kills were awesome just never was really able to have tankiness in the middle which was the weakness of the strat would have loved to maybe see siege elephants for yellow if yellow was ever trying to compete for the middle Hussars were obviously good, but elephants, man, elephants are really strong because they can tank so many shots from the demos and from the galleons. Uh, Flint Maestro. I liked how creative Flint was with uh, resources in this game. Did get the relics in the corner, but had lots of trade from the corner. I think he was the player that really started it all. And what was the total gold brought in that game? I mean, 27k trade profit, 56,000 gold. That's impressive. Uh, I guess Yellow did a lot of that as well. But but those are possibilities that maybe some of you watching this weren't aware of. We see it again. You end up getting in here. You kind of have an idea that it's possible. Um, I mean, we still had some Golden Stone here, right? Which should I should be pretty rare, I think, in most cases. So Complicated map. Difficult to play. GG, everybody. Well played. Appreciate the amount of times we had Kings attempt to be sniped on land, as well as the fight for the middle. Because you never really know on this map how it's going to go. My favorite thing, though, about this map didn't happen here, but can happen so easily. And it, I think it normally happens if it's a straight free for all. Let's say Gray has the middle. Where's his focus on the monument? Where is his rally point on all of his army on the monument? Where's his king unprotected? So it gets incredibly fun in a straight free for all, at least in instances where people aren't like, you know, trying to work together. Because there's going to be zero hesitation from, especially like someone like Red on this position, because Red isn't in the middle right now, and he just goes directly for that king. And I remember instances where someone had the monument at 10 years, was going to hold the monument and secure the monument, and his king got sniped. And then it became problematic from there. I also think there was a game. Now, they have since changed the behavior for how this works, which I've complained about, and I don't think they care. But back in the day, meaning like a year and a half, two years ago, if someone had the middle, so let's say gray here, okay, there's 20 to 30 years remaining. If their king gets sniped, then their unit still controlled the monument. So we actually had an instance where, and I think the title's like a defeated player wins, um, something along those lines. But yeah, we had a player lose the game because they got killed. But then, like, end the game because their units were still on the monument. And so everyone was defeated. I think that was the title. The game where everyone was defeated or everyone died. And then we had a game where... What's the opposite of that? The game where no one lost. <laughs> or something. I forget. Because it was the same week. Um, but anyways, so nowadays, unfortunately, units... After someone's defeated, the units don't control the monument anymore. So that's my humble ask to the devs to bring back that fun because I've always really enjoyed that. But I've kind of given up on that dream.
I've gave all that feedback as well as links and examples and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, good time. I had a great time. Uh, shout out to Roach again. Roach, if you ever see this, I know Roach didn't make it to Community Games today. He's been a mod and a buddy of mine for a long time. So thanks again for this original idea from way back. Um, I had fun. I hope people had fun. Woo, squiggly little lines. That's awesome. Fun. Great outro to this video. Like it if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Woohoo.